Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you and I thank you for this wonderful congregation. I thank you for Pastor Ma and Sister Eutrus. God, I'm asking you to bless them, to help them, to keep them, to strengthen them, to direct them. And I pray that those of us, Lord, who, who, who work with them and under them, that you will help us, Lord God, to follow the Holy Spirit and to really be the support that we need to be. And I pray for the church. Uh, that your anointing will come upon us, Lord, and you will bless us. You will heal us. You will deliver us. We need your help. But we thank you for your favor, which we have. So now I commit myself into your hands. I rest this message in your hands, and I ask for your guidance and your anointing. And help your people, Lord, to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to really re remember the ministers here. You know, one thing I learned from Pastor Mickey's... Um, um, Bible study, when we used to study, is Paul, a great man like Paul, requested prayer. He asked for prayer. He said, pray that, you know, God will give me um, utterance. And if Paul need prayer, how much more we, the ministers? Okay, please remember that. But remember Pastor Ma and Sister Eutrus. Because, I mean, it's everything. The weight of the church and the weight of life. I just thought of it this morning. In your regular prayer, please remember them. And remember us. Remember me that utterance will be given. Um, praise the Lord. Okay. Where do I start? <laughs> I don't want to come in here. Oh, praise the Lord. Yes. Okay. Um, I would like you to turn to, if you can, to your to the Bible, to um, Acts chapter 16. Before I give you the topic, I'm going to read the, read the lesson. Acts chapter 16, and we will be reading uh, verses 23 to 24, and then 35 to 39. Um, and do we have it up on the board? Yes. Now this is about Paul the Apostle. Being beaten, beaten in Rome by the magistrates and thrown into prison. The Bible says, hey, and when they had laid many stripes upon them, that is Paul, and I think it was Paul and uh, Silas, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who having grieved, who having received such a charge, he thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Men of God here doing that too. Um, 35. And when it was day, the magistrates sent the surgeons saying, let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told this saying to Paul, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly, uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison. And now they thrust us out privily, I mean quietly, nay, verily. But let them come themselves and fetch us out. And the surgeons told these words unto the magistrates. And they feared when they heard that they were Romans. And they came and besought them. They beseeched, they begged them. And they brought them out and desired them to depart out of the city. Now, I don't know why the Lord, I've seen this passage of scripture many times. But while I was reading it, the Lord just spoke to me about it. And um, Sister Marv wants to Janet, for some reason, I thought of you when I read this, and I'll tell you why I thought of you all, for some reason. The message here, the title of the message or the topic is Stand Your Ground. They are breaking the law. 
Stand your ground. They are breaking the law. They arrested Paul and his companion as Romans. They had no right to do that. You cannot, you couldn't throw a Roman citizen in jail and beat him without a fair trial. They did wrong. The magistrates, the governors, the leaders of the city, they did wrong. And so they sent to get Paul and his companion out of prison quietly. And Paul said, no. They broke the law. We're not going. Let them come and take us out if they want us out of here. And when I read this thing, I say to myself, all the maladies, all the depressions, all the sicknesses, all the conditions, all the poverties and the lack that assail us as children of God. They are breaking the law of God. They have no right. And we need to stand our ground against them because they have no right. We are going to waste time no more with the question of our position in God. Sometimes we hurt ourselves too much in thinking about unrighteousness and unholiness when indeed we are righteous and holy. We are. You got to know this. And know where you stand, how you stand, and who you stand for, who you stand with, and who stands with you. And they are breaking the law, not you. And we are claiming what the Bible says about us. You go to 1 Corinthians 6, 11. So 1 Corinthians 6, 11. And let us, you know, let, let us fix this thing. To be honest with you, I'm kind of tired with the sicknesses. Even myself, I'm under a lot of attack. I'm tired with the sicknesses. Many Christians, you know, friends of ours in, in, in New York, many Christians are coming down with Alzheimer's and stuff like that. I am really tired. I'm tired with what's happening with our bodies, our minds, our spirits, our conditions. And so in first, what did I say? First, uh, first Corinthians 6 and 11. The Bible says, now, he, Paul was talking about sin and sinners. He was talking about sinners. Then he, 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 he went there, he, then he went on, he said, and such was some of you. In other words, you used to be. Now, those of you who are not saved, there's an opportunity now to get saved. But I'm not an evangelist preaching to unsaved people. I'm encouraging the body of Christ, the church. I see you as children of God. And hear what Paul says. Such were some of you, but you are washed. That is a past tense. They call it the aorist tense. Not shall be washed. You are sanctified. You hear me? This is the word of God. But you are justified. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. We have to recognize what our situation is or what our situations are. We have to believe this. Uh, do we believe that Jesus Christ is going to come again? We believe that. Why do you believe that? Because the Bible says so. My God, the Bible says so. Do you imagine I had a brother who passed away some time ago, and when I saw they put him in, 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 the, um, in the tomb, I could only hope for resurrection. No, he, he is all gone now. He's skeleton now, bones. And, but I will see him again. I believe that. How can we believe that and not this? How can we? That you are justified, sanctified, washed, cleansed. You are, not because you make a mistake here or there. Ask God to forgive you and move on. And rebuke the devil in Jesus' name. Sometime I give Satan three words. Three biblical words. I give him hell, go on too. He 
You know, the, the Roman law could not have been broken. Rome didn't play around. Huh? But the devil is broke, breaking the laws of God in our lives. And we, we, we just, you know, when, when, when he comes to get us, we just, you know, we, we were scared. And we're receiving it. Now, I'm not saying that things wouldn't happen to us. Things do happen. It happened to Jesus. We talked about him in that ship. A storm came, or like the Son of God, a storm came and wanted to sink the boat. But he didn't go down. He didn't put on his life jacket. He rebuked the storm. And, and things will come against us. And we have to be like David. I love David. You know, I, I, I don't know if I could be a martyr. You know, in, in the old days, they used to catch them and throw them to the wild beasts and, you know, killing. You no, know, if God wants me to die, I will die. I'm willing to die for Christ, yeah? But if he's not ready for me yet, don't try it with me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I wouldn't be a martyr. I'll be a David. And we had to stand up and we had to rebuke the devil and rebuke the thing. I'm getting ahead of myself because I feel hurt for the people of God. I feel hurt sometimes. We can do it, saints. If I tell you the things that I have dealt with in my life and I've overcome them. And I'm still dealing with stuff and I shall overcome them. I can't talk too long, but um, mm. Mm. so the Roman law could not have been broken. Oh, but the laws of God, the laws of the stripes that cannot be broken. Didn't the Bible say by his stripes we were made whole? Now that we have to be very careful with that. The blow uh, in, 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 the, in the original language is, is singular, the stripe, the blow. On the Son of God, we were made whole. That means we, we were made, we good to eat. Period. We good, we good, we were made whole. But you see, we could get sick. But because we were made whole, we could rebuke the sickness. And we could ask for healing. So it's not that because of the stripe, all of us, you know, we just automatically, you know, heal. You, know. you could get sick, but you don't have to stay there. So that is a law because of the blow and the stripe, we have been made whole. Not the word of God that does not return unto him void. Let's go to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. We're talking about laws here. Hmm? We're talking about laws. The Roman laws could not be broken. There were penalties. You didn't play with Rome. But we're playing with God. Or rather, our conditions that attack us are uh, playing with God. So let's go to Isaiah 55, verses 10 to 11. And hear what the Bible says. If you can get it up there, if not, I'll read it. It says, For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and returns not hither, but waters the earth, and makes it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish that which it pleases, that which I please. And it shall prosper in the things whereunto I sent it. That's the law of God. That is the word of God. The law of God should not be broken. And there's another law, another word from God. Let's go to Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Philippians 4, I, I don't know if I gave it to you, but uh, Philippians 4, 6 is, yeah, yeah. It says here, be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving... Let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep or garrison or guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. These are laws, saints, that should not be broken, but should be practiced, should be obeyed. How many times anxiety and depression and frustration have us in bondage, in prison? He said, in everything with prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, and I do not have time to go through how you pray and all of that, but you know, mm, the law of God that will not be broken. Now, we have a right 
to stand. We have a right to stand. And there are many, you, 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 you search the scriptures and you will see that you have a right to stand against everything that comes against you. They do not have authority from the word to do what they are doing. They do not have authority, saints, to do what they are doing to you. They don't have the authority. You have the authority to resist them. They are breaking the law. This here now is God's time. Jesus is not coming to die again. He came. It is finished. It is done. This is God's time. The next thing that's going to happen is the return of Christ and the resurrection. But while we are here, we have a work to do. We have a life to live. What did the angel shout it out when Jesus Christ was born? Imagine when Jesus Christ, just when he was born. I see Brother Jason yawning behind him. Brother Jason, am, am I so boring? <laughs> Jesus, when Jesus was born, the angels, you, you know the story, they shouted glory to God in the highest, didn't they? They were happy. God, the whole heaven was happy. Happy, 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 happy. What happened to that joy? But they didn't only stop. They didn't stop their glory to God in the highest, you know. Go to Luke chapter 2, verse 14. Luke 2 and 14. Glory to God in the highest. Okay? Just let me, I have my pages. Um, yes. And on earth, no, 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 no. That's in heaven. After the rapture. At the coming of Christ. Is, 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 is that what the word is saying? No, on earth. On earth, meaning now. Shalom, that's peace. You know what shalom means? Total. Taking care of everything. Shalom, peace. And goodwill toward men. There was a rejoicing when Jesus was born. Glory to God in the heavens. And now, before Christ comes, saints, Brother Terry, before he comes back, I know we're waiting for him to come, and I am waiting too. But before he comes, shalom and goodwill to men. And this is where we should be right now. This is where we are. This is God's time, and this also is our time. We're waiting for a redemption. And we will have that redemption. But let us go to Ephesians 1, and we're going to read. Um, let me see if I have it here. Ephesians chapter 1, page 315. Oh, glory be to God. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. Ephesians 1, 7. I've given you a, a whole set of scriptures, but I had to cut out because uh, um, there were too many. So if you could get me Ephesians 1, 7, I'll show you something about the, about the redemption. And I, I wasn't planning to preach over the communion this morning as, as such, but when Pastor was mentioned about the communion, no, we waited for the redemption. But here what Ephesians 1, 7 says. Before... Um, I read 1 7. 1 6 said that um, we were accepted in the beloved. We are accepted in the beloved. And 1 7 said, in whom, that in the beloved, we have redemption. Have redemption through his blood. Have there is present tense. We are not waiting for him to return to redeem us. We have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Yes, saints, we have redemption. And with it, everything that was lost at the fall. The reason for everything that's happening negative to us is because of the fall. It's because of the fall. And the Bible is saying that now, we have redemption, but we don't know it. We don't practice it. They come to take us out of prison quietly, and we're saying, yes, sir, we're going to come with you. 
rather than standing our ground. We have redemption now. We are not waiting for it to come. And therefore, we ought to take back everything that we lost in the garden. Praise be to God. So because of that, I say to you now, take your stand. Take your stand as that woman. We talk about that woman with the issue of blood. Now, do we believe the Bible? Do we seriously believe that these things happen? L -l Let us get real. Because you see, when she, and l -l -l let's get it in, in Mark 5.28, Mark 5.28. When she touched Jesus Christ, there were many people around him touching him too. Like Pastor Desmond, somebody bumped into him a couple of Sundays ago. He said, who touched me? He said, <laughs> You see, I felt virtue came out of me, but don't you want to touch Pastor Desmond? Touch Jesus. Now, when she touched Jesus, when she touched him, page 16, um, there were a lot of people touching him at the same time. When we come to church, some are believing and some are not. Are you going to be the toucher this morning? Are you going to be the one that's touched? Or you're going to be like all the, the crowd that, you know, just followed him and got nothing from him. So hear what it says here. Mark 5, 28. No, I like her. I like that woman. Is that pretty she not alive now? It says, for she said. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get my wife looking at me. <laughs> she said. You got to say. If I may touch what is closed, if I may, poor thing, you know, I feel sorry for her too because she was not supposed to be around. You know the story about people in that condition. She, you know, she was cast aside. She was not supposed to be in the crowd, and, and she was if in if I could just touch. No, again, I, I like my grammar because I, I, you know, I went to grammar school and I, a lot, a lot of grammar with Latin. So please, if you hear me talking grammar, it's not, I'm not showing sure it often, but it's very important. That if there is a, what you call a subjunctive mood. In other words, you could do it, or you can't, or, or, or you don't have to do it. It's really up to you. The subjunctive mood, if, if, if I can touch what is closed. Now she had an option. The decision was hers, you see. But here the second part of the if. I shall be whole. Now that is what you call the indicative, meaning it's going to happen. You have to come out from the subjunctive, make a decision, get into the indicative. If she did it, you can. If it happened to her, it will happen to you. I believe it with all my heart. But you know, we have to guard against self-inflicted conditions. Saints of God. Let me come down a little bit here. It's very important. Very important. I believe everything I'm preaching. If I didn't believe it, I wouldn't preach it. If I didn't experience it, I wouldn't say it. The Lord speaks to me. He really does. I go, I, when I go, and again, I'm not trying to show up. I'm just trying to be real with you. When I go to the Bible, I ask the Lord to teach me as a child. I go to Sunday school with him. Show me things. That, and he reveals things to me. And there are self inflicted conditions self-inflicted wounds yes the enemy wants to do with us what he's doing but there are times when we are doing things to ourselves and something happened to me in my in, 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 sometime um, a few years ago again my life does, my wife doesn't like me to speak out our business but I love you guys and I asked the Lord you know why did it happen to me I think it happened to me so it could help somebody now God had given me a very good job, very nice job, and I got proud, pumped up, and I wanted to climb very high and very fast, and I felt like they were not treating me right, and so I got angry, and I got nasty, and with the angry and the nasty, I was boasting about my God, how he could deliver me, and you know, who are those people, you know, and on and on and on, on, and it became worse. My attitude created a problem. And then I started feeling pains behind my neck, my head, my, 
I was in pain constantly because we were back and forth on the job. And then they decided now to do something to get me out. And I knew they couldn't fire me like that, so I was being bigger than them, you know? But there's a way that they can get you out. And I think I told you that story here before. What they, what, what they would do, they would change the job, the description. They would make it higher. A higher job paying more, and it will require a, a, a certification that you don't have. And then they will tell you, you have to apply for it. So your old job, they didn't fire you, but your old job is canceled. You have to apply for this job. That's how they got you out. And God knows I was in trouble. I look at my poor wife and my children, and I, I, the sadness, and I couldn't help myself. I was angry, and I was hurting, and I was giving them back and forth. And one day, I, and I, so I took, a, I took a week off. And I, one day, I left my house in Queens, and I traveled to Brooklyn. And my intention was to go to Brookdale Hospital because I couldn't take the headache ending anymore. And I stopped by my sister and then ended up in my church um, in, in Brooklyn. And there was an old deacon who used to have a Friday morning service. And they started to have this service, and one of the deacons were leading the worship. And I wanted to get up and hit him. I just get out of there. I can't, my head hurting me, you know, and he's singing songs that I don't like. And, but when, 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 when the elder came, when the elder came. No, when you're depressed, you're angry. If you know depression, you're angry with everybody. And I was really hurting. And they were planning. They were getting me. They were getting me. Oh, God, they were getting me. And the elder came on the scene, and he used two scriptures. Let me see if I could put them in the right order. First one he says, make it short. Take out the beam from your eye before you take out the moat from somebody else's eyes. And when he said that, I said, he ain't talking to me. <laughs> I said, he's talking to hypocrites. He's not talking to me. Because they were wrong as far as I'm concerned. They hurt me badly. They were wrong. All of them were wrong. But then he went on. And he said something that I never heard even if I read it. You know the scripture where Jesus talked about building two men build, one man build on the sand, and one man build on the rock? I used to always believe it meant one man build by the sea on the sand, and another man moved away and built somewhere else on the rock. And the elder made me to understand, no, it was not so. It was the same spot. While one man was shallow, did not dig deep enough, the other man came on the same spot and dug deep. He dug until he hit bedrock. And so when the storms came, it couldn't shake him. It couldn't move him. And the spirit of the Lord woke me up. Put a light in my hand and say, that's you, Jerry. That's you right there where you are, where you want to run from. That is you there. Go down. Go down. Go down, Jerry. Go down and find bedrock. Saints of God, if you are there today, go down and find bedrock. Some of you want to leave the church. Go down and find bedrock. You want to leave your job. Go down and find bedrock. Correct your life. Correct your mind. Correct your thinking. Find bedrock and stand on the rock of God and this I, I thought of it the other day I thought of it the other day and I almost cried they had me right there I made a decision God I repent and I went back to work the Monday and for a whole week I behaved myself I changed <laughs> this is real and at the end of one week at that, that, that time, personnel and that everybody had ganged up. At the end of one week, I went to my immediate supervisor. And I said to him, no, mind you know, the job had changed, you know. I didn't have, they were asking for a bachelor's degree, which I didn't have and all of that. And I said to him, I have changed. 
I said to him, I, you know, I said, I said, you know, the guy tell me, he said, you know, we noticed that. <laughs> he said, we noticed that. He said, but the job is already, like Esther and the Jews, he said, it's already advertised. And when they advertise a job where I worked, it's all over the world, eh? not only in New York. Everybody wants to come in to get that job. He said, it's already out there. We cannot take it back. Oh, praise the Lord. He said, but go ahead. Uh, apply for it. Uh, go ahead uh, and apply still. We can't take it back. Uh, like Esther and the Jews, remember, in Persia, when the edict, the edict was already put forward to kill the Jews, he said, we cannot take it back. Uh, but we're going to turn things around. Uh, he said, we can't take it back. Uh, but because you made a change, because you obeyed God, God came out to my help. God came out to my help. I got the job at the higher level with the higher pay that I couldn't get before. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. You all don't understand. You all don't understand. And I asked God, I asked God yesterday, I said, God, why did you do that for me? It was a goner. And God said, somebody needs this story. Somebody needs it. I'm going to stop now. God knows your heart. God knows your situation. I want you to take your stand. I want you to take your stand. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to make corrective, take corrective measures in your life. Search yourself. Do like me. Now there's a scripture in Mark 11, 24, 25, you know it. He said, whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you have it. He said so, huh? And then he said, when you're praying, forgive. Forgive. Forgive, he says. And some of, us have, some of us have a lot to forgive for. Things happen to us. I'm almost done. When we were children, let it go. School teach, the teachers used to beat, beat, beat you like crazy for nothing. And some of you still have it in your mind. Let it go. Parents did you all kind of thing. Let it go. You know, when I go before God, I say, God, I forgive everybody. I forgive, I forgive, I forgive the slave owners, the slave masters. I forgive the wicked people. No, seriously, forgive. And I'm telling you something, black people have a wonderful opportunity to practice forgiveness. We just have to be, I'm, come on, you know, especially the black man. And, and not, it's not only in race, you know, even among us black people. When you're dark skin like me, you go through a lot. You got to forgive people. I remember my one more story. My, my, my wife's sister is very dark like me. She married a light-skinned guy, and her children are light-skinned. Her other sister is light-skinned, and his, their, her children are light-skinned. So this light-skinned guy, he died, and we had the funeral. And we were standing at the back of the church, and everybody is light-skinned, except my wife and I, but they know my wife, they know me. And this other guy, a friend of, of theirs, he came in and he's greeting everybody. Family, family, family. And when he came to me, he stopped. Like, guess who is coming to dinner? <laughs> you know? Even that, 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 no, no, what I'm saying is this, that <clears throat> there is prejudice and th everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So it's not, it's not, it's not only about race, it, that's just who you human beings are. But the Bible says, forgive. If you know how to forgive, man, you, if you know how to forgive, there's a peace, there's a joy. If you know how to forgive, there is victory in forgiving. And when you are like me, <laughs> a police stopped me one night and he kept me up for a long time and I asked him, what are you stopping for? He told me, clean my license plate. I got to forgive. You, we have to forgive. And some of us have wonderful opportunities. To see these things as opportunities to forgive. Not to hate, but to forgive. So saints of God today, stand your ground in the name of Jesus. Rebuke for yourself. I, can't, I don't have to lay hands on you. Sister Marvel, Sister Janet, I thought of you guys. They have no right. There's a law against what's happening to you. 
They have no right sins. They have no right. Stand your ground. Correct yourself. Because some of us, like I say, have caused the problem in our own selves. But my God, stand on the word. And in the name of Jesus Christ, rebuke it. And if you don't know, if you don't know the name of it, I call everything infirmities. Just say it. In the name of Jesus, you sickness, whatever it is. I don't rebuke my bills. I don't rebuke my credit card. In, no, no, you're laughing, but it's true. In the name of Jesus Christ, I believe. Say it, I believe. Pastor, I'm going to finish now because Pastor Mike. Bless you. Bless you, saints. Thanks for listening. That's why I love him so you know, I could do I could get away with, with, with I, could. I command you to take up your pulpit, stand and walk. <laughs> could you praise God for the word of God today? An awesome word, an awesome testimony to the power of God and to confession and to forgiveness. Thank you, Pastor Jerry. <laughs>